Java while loop worksheet number three. Num equals seven. This is true, so we print seven. It goes down to six. It prints six. It goes down to five. Print five, four, four, and now it gets good. Um, after it prints four, because the num minus minus is below that, it bumps down to three. We go to the top of the loop, and since 3 is not greater than 3, that's false. We don't do anything else, and here's your final answer. Number 2, 64, that is greater than 7, so it prints 64. And then 64 divides itself by 2, so it chops it down to 32. We're, we're at the top of the loop. It's still true, and because it's print and not print ln, the 32 that now prints, prints right next to the 64, and it, you know, that's just the way it looks there. And then uh, we divide by 2, down to 16. 16 is greater than 7, so we print a 1, 6, add it to that all, concatenate it to it, whatever you want to call it. It goes down to 8, 8 is greater than 7, so the 8 prints. And then, after the 8 prints, we divide it by 2, and num ends up being 4. And 4 is not greater than 7, so we are finished. Moving on to number 3. Num is initialized to 5, which is indeed greater than 0. 100 mod 5, the remainder, you should be able to do that in your head, the remainder of uh, 100 divided by 5 is 0, and that prints num minus minus is to 4. We loop back up. 4 is greater than 0. Now pay attention. 100 mod 4. What is the remainder when you take 100 divided by 4? You should not need to do long division here or need a calculator. You should know that 4 is can go into 100 because 4 quarters is a dollar. It's evenly divisible. So again the remainder is 0. And because of the print, the zero prints right next to that zero. Now it gets interesting. Num goes down to three, and we loop back up to the top. What's the remainder of 100 divided by three? Well, I know three goes into 99 evenly, so the remainder is one. Again, AP students especially should not need to do that in their head. The one prints out, and then num minus minus is to two. We loop back up the top, and obviously 2 divides evenly into 100. So the remainder, so 0 prints for that, and num minus minus is to 1. Okay, well, think about it. What is the remainder when you have 100 divided by 1? Well, it's 0. It's always 0. 1 goes into 1 one time. 1 times 1 is 1. Subtract there, you get 0. You're done. It's just, oh no. Yeah, uh, you, uh, that goes into zero times, you bring down this other zero here, uh, one goes into that zero times, and you're left with, sorry it's a little messy, a remainder of zero. So the remainder is currently zero and that other zero prints, and then the minus minuses to zero. And 0 is not greater than 0, so we finally get a false, and we are finished. That is the precise output there, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Circling our final value there, stored in the variable num. Oh, I love the Fibonacci numbers. I think this is something related to Fibonacci. Let's watch. Num1, num2, and num3. And num3 is less than 14, so we begin. Right side first, num plus 1 plus num 2. Uh, 1 plus 1 is, is 2. That 2 gets assigned into num 3, crossing num 3 out, making it a 2. Next line of code, num 1 equals num 2. It always works from right to left. Num 2 is currently 1, and the 1 goes into num 1. Well, that's kind of stupid. Um, num 1 is still 1, but I, but I show the pattern here. Then the next line of code, num3 gets assigned into num2. So this 2 and num3 
overwrites and replaces what used to be in them too. Now, finally, we system out print. Oh, there's an error. Uh, there's a typo here. Sorry about that. I'll have to fix this uh, uh, version of the worksheet. There should be a, a plus sign there for, for concatenation. So if you wrote compile error in the year 2014 when this was assigned, you're okay. But all future people to watch this video, you probably saw a plus on your worksheet. So let's uh, pretend that there's a plus. Num3 is currently 2, and then we print a comma concatenated to it, and we loop back up to the top. Oh, and I don't want a null in there. So for all future versions of the worksheet, we're going to pretend there's no uh, ln. Okay, we loop back up to the top. Being careful here to pay attention because this is a little tricky. Num3 is less than 14. So num3 equals num1 plus num2. Uh, 3. 3 goes into num3 now. Num2 goes into num1. So that kind of slides over there. Think of it like kind of like that. Num3 goes into num2. Kind of think of it as uh, sliding across there. And then we print num3 plus a comma. So 3 prints with another comma. We loop back up to the top. Num3 is equal to these two guys added up. So that's a grand total of 5 now over here, 2 plus 3. Num2 goes into num1. So it's kind of like this bumps down here and plugs into num1 again. There's a little pattern if you see. Num3 goes into num2. This 5 again slides to the left and plugs in there. And then we system out print num3 plus concatenation. So a 5 prints out with a comma. Oh, I hope we're finished soon. Um, num1 plus num2. Gee whiz, that's now 8. Num2 goes into num1. Num3 goes into num2. You don't have to draw the arrows like I'm doing this here. This is really just me showing you the nice little routine or pattern that's going on. And then we uh, print out the 8 with a comma. I think we're almost finished. Num1 plus num2 is 13. We're getting there. We're getting there. Num2 slides over. Num3 slides over. It's a nice little pattern. We system out print the 13. We go back up to the top. Oh, 13 is less than 14. We have to keep going. We're so close. Num1 plus num2. 8 plus 13 is 21. This num2 slides over to num1. 13 slides down here. And the num3 slides over to the left yet again. And we print, drum roll, uh, we print a 21. And an, an annoying comma does print out here. And we loop back up to the top. And finally, our control expression is false. 21 is not less than 14, so we're finished. Yes, there's an annoying comma. That's just the way it is. We circle the final answers here. 13, 21, 21. Everything else you can put slashes through <coughs> if you want to. Be like really precise. Finally, number five. You'll see this on the AP exam. Something like number five, if uh, you have the pleasure of taking that uh, exam. And number five here, we have a variable named rows and a variable named columns. And it's a double nested for loop. Let's do it. Hold on a second. I uh, can't move this down like I wanted to, so. I don't know what's happening. It's kind of strange here. OK, sorry about that. Let's do this quickly before my video runs out. Rows, greater than 0. Columns, greater than 0. System out, print, star. So we get a little star, great. Columns minus minuses to 2. Then we hit this closing curly brace, which loops us back up to the matching top of that while loop. Columns is still greater than zero, so we system out print another star. 
Be looking for a pattern because the pattern is going to become clear real soon. Columns minus minus is to one. We loop back up to the top. We print another star. We columns minus minus to a zero. The zero is not greater than zero, so we're finished with this while loop. We finally release and go to this line of code that says rows minus minus. Now, I always put the, the number three right here, right below. Some people, they put the three like down here. Just kind of, some people like it that way. I don't know. I just write, put three here. Anyway, rows minus minus. Columns. Columns resets to three. I'm going to use a different color just to make a point. And we uh, proceed now with this, this system out print that you can barely see in the video. It, it prints a new line. But when you print nothing, empty parentheses, it brings your blinking cursor from where you were doing a print down to the new line. Just saying. Then, you can't see it in this video, but there's a curly brace down there, so that loops you back up to the top of this while loop. Rows is greater than zero right now. So we now, this is the tricky part. We get to this line of code right here, while columns greater than zero. It, it is currently true. It, it, columns is three, and it's greater than zero. So we have to go through this inner while loop all over again. So we print a star, which happens to be on this next line, uh, just because that's, that's where the blinking cursor would be. We um, columns minus minus. We go back up to the top, we print another star because of the print and not print ln. That second star is to the right of the first star. We columns minus minus to a one. Um, we print another star. We columns minus minus to zero. Zero is not greater than zero, so we're finished this time with this while loop. We get to rows minus minus. So rows minus minus bumps this guy down to two. And we reset columns to three. So I'm going to use red now again. And we go back up to the top of this while loop. Rows is still greater than three. So columns is greater than zero. So we have to erase all our scratch work here and proceed with a, another complete iteration of a full exhaustion of this inner while loop. System out print a star. Well, the blinking cursor is down here now because of that extra system out print ln. Columns minus minus is to two. We print another star. Columns minus minus is to one. We print another star. Columns minus minus is to zero. We've seen this before. We're finished now with this inner while loop. We, rows minus minus is to one. Columns resets the three. I'm running out of room here. We go back up to the top of this upper loop, and we then go into the inner loop, and we system out print another star. Gee whiz. But we're on the next line uh, below here. So the star will be there. Columns minus minuses bumps down to a two. It prints another star. It bumps down to one. You've seen this before. It bumps down to zero. It does not then print any more. We're done with that. OK, drum roll here. Rows minus minuses, thank goodness, to zero. Columns resets to three. Well, who cares? Because that's not going to matter. And then print LN. The blinking cursor is right now down here. I'm just saying, uh, it might not matter in this problem, but the blinking cursor, if anything ever does print out again, it's, it's down here. And we go back up to the top of the, for, the outer while loop. Is rows greater than zero, Tristan? Yeah. False. Correct. We're done. We're done with the outer while loop, and we're finished with that problem. Circling that three circling that zero, and most importantly on the AP exam, what they're always at after is, do you know what prints out? Well, duh. Look. Rows four, columns three. There are four horizontal rows and three vertical columns. But on the AP exam, they don't name their variables obviously like this. They might make it like R and C or A and B to really mess with you. But once you see a pattern, you go with it. Good luck.